How's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Unity tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to turn this to this. Alright, so the first thing I've done to set up my scene here was just to quickly import a couple simple sprites here. I just imported a circle and a crosshair sprite that I made really quickly in Photoshop. You can make these uh, in a different program however you'd like to and then just bring them in. Again, doesn't have to be these exact sprites. You can use whatever sprites you desire. And then to set this up real quick, we're just going to take the camera background here in the inspector and drop it down to a darker gray so that we can see what we're working on a little bit better. All right, so to get started on making our crosshair, we're going to hop over to the scene view over here and we're going to go over to the hierarchy, right click and create an empty game object. I'm going to go ahead and reset the transform on this and I'm going to rename it to custom cursor and you can rename this to whatever you want I'm just renaming it custom cursor because it's going to be replacing our in-game or just regular mouse cursor under this object we can create another empty game object we can call it graphics I like to do this to keep it organized so that anything I create under this graphics game object is going to have all the sprites that make up the graphic for the custom cursor. So right under here, we can go and right click and create a sprite. And our first sprite, I'm going to rename to dot. And I'm going to go right over here to the sprite render and select the circle sprite. At the moment, it's a bit big. So I'm going to drop the size of the sprite until it's somewhere where I think it's good. I'm gonna do 0.0075 on the Y and the X here, and that looks pretty good. If I zoom in on my view here, that's pretty nice, as that's just going to be the center of the actual crosshair. And then I'm going to duplicate this. Um, to do this, you can just select that object and Control D. And now you hit Control D, you've got a duplicate. I'm going to rename it to Crosshair. And this one, I'm going to go over to the sprite render and replace the sprite with the crosshair sprite. Right now it's a bit too small for what I want, so I'm going to up the size on it to, I'm going to say 0.02 here. That looks pretty nice. So now we've got a nice, simple crosshair sprite over here that we're going to be using for our cursor. So now that we have our graphic, we want our graphic here to follow our mouse cursor around the place so that we can replace our basic cursor with that graphic. So I'm going to go ahead, close these drop downs here. And we're going to select our custom cursor object. And we're going to go ahead and add component here. And I'm just going to name it custom cursor. It's just going to be a C sharp script. And create and add that. And then before I load it up in Visual Studio here, I'm going to go to my assets folder. And just for organization, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call it scripts. And this is the folder where we're going to keep all the scripts we're going to be using. So I'm going to drag that custom cursor script into my scripts folder. Now we can go back to our custom cursor object and double click that script. I'm going to reload here. So in here we want to have a position that we store for where we want our cursor to be at any given moment which is or our graphic to be which is going to be where we have our cursor on the screen. So we're going to go ahead and start by creating a vector 2 and we can name this target position. And that's just going to store the position that we want our cursor to be at at that given moment. So we can go over here to the update function and we can set target position equal to the camera and then we're gonna get the main camera in the scene and we're going to use this screen to world point here which is going to take the position of our mouse cursor on screen and it's going to convert it to world coordinates because our graphic object is inside the actual scene and so if we try to use pixel measurements it's not going to work with that so screen to world point and then we are going to input our mouse position here. Now this is taking our mouse position on the screen and converting it to world coordinates um, so that we can use it 
to change the position of our actual graphic. And so we're storing that in our target position here. Then all we need to do under the update here is take the actual transform position of the graphic and we are going to set it equal to the target position. And now if we hit save on this and go back to Unity here and let it compile, if we hit play, we should see that it does not follow our <laughs> mouse cursor. Okay, so after looking around a little bit, what I forgot to do is go over here to the main camera and actually set the projection on it to orthographic as this is a 2D game anyway. So we want the projection to be orthographic. Perspective is if you're trying to get an actual perspective on your game or if you're making an actual 3D game. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're not worried about making a custom cursor for 3D. We're just trying to make it for a, a basic 2D orthographic view. So if I hit play now, you can see here that our graphic actually follows our mouse cursor around. But we have an issue right now. We can see our mouse cursor on screen still right over top our graphic. So to change that, we're going to go over here into our custom cursor script. And in the start function, we're going to set cursor visibility equal to false. Now you can use this anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the script. Um, but this is going to allow us to hide our mouse cursor so that we only see our graphic. And now you can see the only thing visible on screen is our graphic and it's following our mouse cursor perfectly. In fact, if I move my cursor off screen here to the left to my second screen, it actually still follows it, which is quite interesting. But there you go. We have our graphic actually following our mouse cursor. So now that we have our cursor graphic actually following our cursor position on screen, we can make it look a little bit nicer and play around with customizing our cursor even more. So we can go over here to our custom cursor game object and we can right click and then we're going to create a trail under the effects here. Now we're going to set the width here to match this dot in the middle. So I'm going to set it to 0.00. I think 0 0.05 or 0 0.005, we'll see here in a sec. If I take the move tool here and I'm on the trail object, I can move it around so we can see the actual width of it. I'm going to control Z that back to where it was. And we can see that the trail here is a bit long right now. So we're going to set the time to something like 0.1. And now if I move it around, you can see it's a lot shorter. So that looks nicer. Control Z that back in place. And then over here in the width, I'm going to go ahead and double click to create another point in the graph here. I'm going to bring it down here. And then I'm going to right click that point and go to left tangent. And I'm going to make it linear. I'm going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to go to the right tangent and make that linear so that we have our trail kind of capping off like that, shrinking in width as it goes. And I think that will look pretty nice with our cursor so we can go ahead and save here and just leave that there and now if we hit play we can see that we get a trail behind our cursor which looks really nice and clean all right so now that we've got a nice trail on our cursor let's add a little bit more to it we're gonna make this graphic here the actual cursor graphic spin as well so that it just adds a little bit more to it since right now it's currently just static even though we have a nice trail following it. So we're gonna go ahead and under the graphics object here, we're gonna go and add a component and we're gonna call it a rotator script. So what this script is gonna do is it's gonna allow us to both control and just actually rotate, apply the rotation to the uh, cursor graphics. So we can go ahead and move that script here into our scripts folder and we can double click it in the inspector to bring it up here. So to start the script off, we're gonna want to go ahead and just create a header here and we're gonna call it rotation settings. This will just make it so it shows up a little bit nicer in the inspector. You'll see after we create our variables here. So we'll go ahead and create a public float speed 
Now this is going to be the variable that's going to determine how fast our rotation is going to be happening. And then we're going to create another public variable here. It's going to be of type boolean and we're going to name it rand.dir. This is going to tell us whether we want to randomize the direction in which our object is spinning in. So either clockwise or counterclockwise. And this is, these are both variables we're going to define in the inspector. So if I hit save here and I go into Unity, you can see we get our nice header here for rotation settings. And then we can set the speed and the rand.dir variable to true or false here. So going back into our script, here in the start, we're going to want to actually check if we have selected a random direction or that we want if we want to randomize a direction or not. And if so, then we want to actually randomize the multiplier on the speed from a negative to a positive or positive to a negative. So we're going to go ahead, create an if statement that's going to check if we selected to randomize the direction. So if rander is equal to true. And in here, we're going to create an integer called dir and we're going to set it equal to a random range between 0 and 2. Now since these are both integers, our 0 and our 2 here, the range is actually going to include the 0 but exclude the 2. So that means this is either going to return a 0 or a 1 randomly. So then dir is going to equal 0, 1. So we're going to take it if it equals 1 we are going to set speed times equals negative one. So we're going to take our speed and we're going to multiply it by a negative one, which will make it a negative number and then it will turn in the other direction. We could make an else statement here, but there's really no need to if we always set our speed or always type in our speed in the inspector as a positive number. So we can leave that there. That's already working for our randomization. And down here in the update, we want to actually go ahead and rotate the object every frame. So we're going to go ahead and get the transform of the object that this is under. And then we are going to, we're going to use this rotate function here. That's going to take a vector three in Euler's. So Euler's are just a regular angle. So we're not using quaternions here. So in here, we want to pass in an X rotation, a Y rotation, and a Z rotation. We don't want our object to rotate on the X or on the Y because you can see here, if we go ahead into the scene view and we try to rotate this graphic on the X and on the Y, nothing's happening because this is a 2D graphic. And when we turn on the Z, you can see that's the actual axis that we want to rotate on. So we're going to go back here into our script and we are going to not change the X and not change the Y. And then in the Z here, we're going to apply our speed. Now, one more thing we want to do here is to multiply the speed that we're applying by time dot delta time so that the actual frames that we're getting won't affect the rotation of the object here. So we have that set. This should now rotate our object. So we can go over here and now that our code is compiled we can change the speed to something say 350 and then we'll say randomize direction and you can see if we hit play our cursor is now spinning and since we're randomizing the direction right now it's rotating counterclockwise so if we hit play again now we can see it's rotating clockwise and so that's going to be random every time the game starts if you want to randomize the direction if not you would simply just tick that off and then up here you could put a negative or a positive depending on which direction you want it to spin so i'm going to go ahead and say 250 maybe here might look nice there we go so now it's not spinning too fast but we have a nice rotation on the cursor and it looks pretty clean and one more thing you can do with this as well in here in the uh, under the header, we can right under the or right above the variable that you want to apply this to. You could do this with any float. Um, go ahead and create a range slider and we're going to do it from one to I'm going to say 500. 
this is just going to make it look a little bit nicer in the inspector and a little bit easier to work with. So you can see here it's created an actual slider. So if I don't maximize it here and just start, I can actually change this here a little bit easier like that. And you can see it applies right away to our speed here. You don't have to do this, but it's always nice to have a slider make things a little bit cleaner when you can. So now we have a nice cursor here with a trail and a rotation. So you can see here after messing around a little bit, I changed the color of the cursor and the trail and I added some post-processing with a little bit of bloom there. You can see you can get something looking really nice and clean, especially when I move my cursor around really quickly here. The trail glows really nice and you get that spinning cursor crosshair when it's uh, when you're not moving your mouse around too much. You can see it a little bit better. And I've used this in uh, like any game that I've done this for so far and I just wanted to share it with you guys in hopes of helping you guys out sharing a little bit with you. Um, you could get this to look really nice with any top down 2D game or any 2D platformer that you're working on and really play around with it to do whatever you want with it since it's just a game object following your cursor around you could have a particle system on it playing or emitting particles while you're moving it around or you could play around with some animations but really customize it to your liking and I hope this has helped you guys out so I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial stay safe and have a good one